As the boat was going down the canal, the prince noticed that the water level in the canal was rising by the minute. The boat was rocking. Murugayan was working hard to pay it. The speed of the storm was increasing by the second. Trees were falling dead on both sides. The boat approached Nandi Mandapam. The prince saw the hall. The water came above Nandi's head. From this it became clear how much the water level had risen. Murugaya. Stop the boat a little, said the prince. Murugayan stopped the boat. But its game could not be stopped. The prince jumped out of the boat and landed in Nandi Mandapam. Then, holding a tree that had fallen near it, he climbed onto the peak above the Mandapam. He looked around from there. The entire downstream side of the canal was a single flood. More than half of the trees in the coconut grove had fallen into it. Looking through the gap, it was seen that the sea had reached the edge of the coconut grove. To the north, Aralmas Hivarma looked in the direction of Sudamani Viharam. It was seen that the sea was raging up to the outer steps of the Viharam. A thought arose in Pani's heart. It sent shivers through his whole body. Murugaya. Turn the boat around. Let it go towards the Viharam. Said the prince. The son of Tyagavidankar, who was not used to talking much and had immense devotion to the prince, without even asking why, turned the boat around and steered towards Sudamani Viharam. It took a little less time to leave than it did to arrive. But for the prince every second was an age. When the boat reached the Viharam, the raging sea almost surrounded the Viharam. The water level was rising. Nagaipatanam Sudamani Viharam was not so majestic or tall like the Viharams in Eland. There was a situation that even the top of the Viharam would be flooded if the water rose a little more. Prince David jumped from the boat to the upper deck of a hall full of water. He ran around excitedly. He did not go to the base of the Viharam but searched the upper floors from every part. He had to wade through chest-deep water at some places in the upper floors. More and more disappointment was setting in. At last he reached the place where the statue of Gautama Buddha was located. The water was up to the chest of the idol. There the prince stood and looked around. He bent down and looked at the water. Wow! The sound was a sign that he had found what he was looking for. Yes, Acharya Bhikshu was sitting under the Buddha statue in the water with both of the Lord's Padmasaranas tightly tied. Pani's Selvar plunged into the water and forcibly freed both the Bhikshu's arms from the idol and lifted him up. Lifting the Bhikshu in the water was easy. Not so easy after getting out of the water. The weight of the Bhikshu, who was Ajanupagu and a well-trained person, stifled the prince. Murugaya! Murugaya! He voiced that. Here I come. Saying that, Murugayan brought the boat. Pani's Selvar Acharya picked up Bhikshu and rushed towards the boat. His feet faltered. 